Hey folks, thanks for joining me today on Doc Talk. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University. We got Dr. Chris Reinhardt that's going to join us. Going to have a fun show today. We're going to talk about pond management, whether it's blue green algae or making sure that cows don't stomp down our dam or making sure we have that farm pond stocked and harvested. It's going to be a great show. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. Learn more at agpromosource.com. This segment brought to you by Kansas Regenerative Medicine. Your stem cells, your health, your life. Dr. Reinhardt, welcome to the show. Thank you. It's always great to be here, Dan. <laughs> well, this is friend and colleague, and when you're out at the Cowboy Colleges, you see Dr. Reinhardt talking about nutrition and production management, along with Dr. Apley and Doc, Dr. Knopfsinger. And we sure have had enjoyed getting to meet people that watch the show, and Dr. Reinhardt's one of those people that's constantly on the show. And today, uh, it's going to be something that's kind of fun. We, we both work a lot in feed yards. We also do some cow work and some stalker work and, and today we're going to talk about ponds and you know there's so many things and dynamics about ponds but the pond is something that's kind of synonymous with grass cattle and you know when we get our time off our relaxation and and being able to stand by the water or things to that nature and but it is it it is the the source and supply of water for whether we're talking brood cows or stalker cattle, um, water is critical. You're a nutritionist as well as a, a veterinarian, and we can't give a nutrition talk without starting with water, right? It's right. the number one nutrient. Next to oxygen. Yeah, true. true. <laughs> <laughs> but, but uh, you know, when we think about water, talk to me a little bit about our water requirements. I mean, these, these cows drink an awful lot of water. Stalkers, cows, calves, everything. Yeah, our, everybody knows we've, we've dramatically increased our cow size over the last 30, 40 years. And a lactating cow drinks a lot of water, even at, let's call it 40 degrees Fahrenheit. As we move that temperature up to 80, 90, 100 degrees we've had here recently, it nearly doubles her water requirement. When we talk about stalker calves in the summertime, their water requirement, they don't drink a lot of water when it's cool. They don't need a ton of water. When we add that heat stress element, they will nearly triple their water consumption and, and demand just to di help dissipate that heat. And a lot of times we'll say that, you know, cattle will drink three times their dry matter intake in cool times, but five to six times their dry matter intake in the summer times. It, and especially our English, English continental cross cattle, what do we like to say about 70% of our national herd is black hided today. Yep. And so if you don't really have any heat tolerant blood in those cattle, they're, they're gonna undergo heat stress to some degree, even though they're out on pasture this summer. And so the water is a big critical element to, to helping them alleviate that. And when we start to think about that and we start to think about heat stress, you know, the ponds warm up and as far as their, their uh, water temperature but those cattle get down in the water, they, they uh, will, will uh, cool themselves off in the water. And so we're gonna talk about things today that issues that can go on with the pond that can affect the cattle, issues that the cattle can, that go on that the cattle will affect the pond. And, and then at the end, we'll talk a little bit about some things, maybe a little bit more fun for, for you and I on, on some of the stocking of, of ponds. Excellent. This is Dr. Chris Reinhardt. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson here at Kansas State University, or I'm in the College of Veterinary Medicine, and Chris is over in Animal Sciences. When we come back, we're going to talk about the blue-green algae. We're going to talk about keeping ponds healthy, and we're going to talk about how to stock and harvest fish out of ponds. You're watching Doc Talk. Thanks for watching us today. More with Dr. Chris and myself after these messages. I think it really extends your home out to the outdoors and Mark always had kind of a vision of what he wanted to do with the yard and so he envisioned this kind of outdoor area, the waterfall and things, but when Blueville came in they had some really good ideas of how to place it and how to do different things that really enhance the project. So. 
Yeah, over the years we've uh, grown to really enjoy our outdoor living space and uh, developed a great working relationship with Bluebell. Buying a car shouldn't be this hard. And at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego, it isn't. It's actually awesome. Whether you want a new or used car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. Even if you want to custom order a new car or truck, Toby's team can make the deal. See Toby's team at Brown Chevrolet Buick in Wamego. We're awesome. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment is brought to you by Santa Fe Trail Meats in Overbrook, or visit us online at sftmeats.com. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with my friend and colleague, Dr. Chris Reinhart, and we're talking about ponds, and it's it's uh, something that is we don't take for granted. It's something we manage, that we work with, that supplies water to our cattle on a day-to-day -day basis, and sometimes those ponds can have issues that cause problems for our cattle. Exactly. It's something, again, we don't take the water for granted, but because it's 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 there day in, day out. We may not pay as much attention to it as we need to. And in the summertime, I think it's pretty critical that we, uh, we pay a lot of attention to the quality and quantity of the water available. And I saw a, a study done by Oklahoma State where they looked at, you know, nitrates and calcium, phosphorus, and, and different things of that nature of like 3,000 ponds and really didn't find any issues of water quality from, from surface water. You know, they had to watch the things that would wash in the ponds, um, but, but why is it more of an issue in the summer than in the, the winter? Well, one of my favorite, uh, I guess you'd call it truisms, is it's not a problem until it is. And, and in the summertime, we just talked about the volume of water. Cows will nearly double their water intake when they're underline, under borderline heat stress. Stalker cattle will nearly triple their water consumption. So if something is a borderline potential issue yeah. in cool temperatures, and all of a sudden they double their water intake, now we may have a problem. And we'll even see that with well water you know, because of increased intake, sulfates, things to that. Always test your water, make sure you got good clean source, especially uh, uh, water in, from wells. But couple it with, all of a sudden we have a bloom of blue-green algae. If you go out in your pond and you see a, a green sheen or scum across the top, that's pretty indicative. Now, not the old grass algae, but but you can tell the difference. This almost looks like the stuff inside the lava lamp. Um, there's description in the water and you'll form these blebs and these bubbles. And, and, and we have a real bad issue around, around the Flint Hills and, and in some of our reservoirs. Um, but this stuff's toxic. It's toxic to cows, to dogs, to people. And we really, it can be, be quite dangerous. It's a tremendous challenge. And again, it's something ranchers, not just here in, in Kansas, but throughout the Midwest really need to pay attention to. Yep, and so the cyanobacteria will be, are part of this algae, blue-green algae. And they produce two types of toxins. And one of the toxins, the, the anatoxin, is kind of like a neurological toxin. And if a dog just gets a mouthful of this. It's almost like, uh, some, I heard somebody say it's equivalent of smoking over 100 cigarettes at once. But it can cause muscle tremors, neurotoxicity, and, and many issues. The, the micro cystins or, or that can cause the, the liver damage. Okay, that's a long-term problem and is not as much of an issue. But if you get the anatoxin from the blue-green algae, this is when we get slud. Salivation, lacrimation, urination, diarrhea in, in dogs, in cattle, and you'll find the cattle dead next to the, to the water tank. So if you have some abnormal deaths in a, in a pasture, or if your dog drinks blue-green algae, there's no reversal or antidote for this. So be very careful. We're gonna take a break. When we come back, we'll talk about how to manage the ponds from the cows after these messages.
Soil is the life of a farm. And for 25 years, SureCrop Liquid Crop Nutrition has helped growers produce abundant quality crops while preserving and improving the soils they steward. SureCrop offers complete soil and plant analysis with cropping recommendations, delivery direct to your on-farm storage, and quality crop nutrition custom blended for your field. Choose SureCrop for the assurance of excellence for your soil. Call today or visit their website for more information. I will take action against herbicide-resistant weeds. I will know my weeds, and I will stop them before they go to seed. I will do whatever it takes to give my crops the upper hand, and I will use multiple herbicide sites of action because every action counts. I will take action, this time, for all time. The BQA Tip of the Day, sponsored by Beringer Engelheim Vet Medica Inc. Ron Gill with Texas A&M AgriLife Extension. Our BQA Tip for the day uh, centers around trying to get horses ready to, to go on to cattle. And there's a lot of different ways to do that, but they have to be broke. They have to be able to uh, stop, start, turn quietly. And that sounds very simple, but on young horses sometimes it's not necessarily the, the case. And even on older horses, sometimes we have to take some time to get them calmed down, to respond very quietly when we put them on cattle, not to overreact as well when an animal moves. Uh, sometimes our well-trained horses may actually be too aggressive in trying to stop movement. So it does take a horse that is attentive, uh, responds to the rider very quickly, but we won't, don't want one that's anticipating every move a cow might make. No matter where, no matter why, the Veterinary Health Center at Kansas State University is committed to providing quality patient care to animals and exceptional customer service to their owners. From routine checkups to emergency and specialty care, our world-renowned specialists and experienced professionals are here to discover, to teach, and to heal. Let us know. How can I help? How can we help? I'm Annette from Jackson's. Our annual gigantic sale will be this Saturday where every plant in the greenhouse and in our nursery from annual to perennial shrub, tree, or water plant will be half price. Don't miss our biggest sale of the year. WIBW Jackson's Greenhouse Garden Club members can shop Friday, Saturday, and Sunday when they present their membership card. They'll receive the 50% sale prices. Jackson's Greenhouse has what you need today. Support Kansas agriculture education with an AgriTag. AgriTags are available anytime at your county treasurer. They look great on cars and trucks. For more information, go online to ksagclassroom.org. Valley Vet Supply is devoted to providing information and professional quality products at reasonable prices. This segment brought to you by Kansas Soybean Commission. Progress powered by Kansas farmers. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson and Dr. Chris Reinhart. We appreciate you coming to our Cowboy College and meeting us in person. And, and since we went there, we're gonna have some coffee cups. Now I gotta back up. Our friend Hugh down in Georgia, who has the hired hand fly sprayer, which is a great tool and a great technology and something that we've seen used very effectively uh, to continually provide fly spray for cows and, and that. When we did our show on flies a few weeks ago, we, we did not mention his technology in the show, and we should have. And, and it's something that, that we've been, been looking at and utilizing some of the pastures, and it's something I uh, think you ought to take a look at when, you, when you're looking for fly control in your cows. But anyway, let's talk about ponds. What are some things we want and don't want around the pond? Well, the one thing when I think of ranchers, the amount of time and, and just capital outlay to, to put in and, and maintain a really good water source, a pond, this costs a lot of money, and, and to take care of that and extend that investment, uh, 
number one, we want to make sure trees over time don't crop up. Trees, one thing we love about trees is they keep the soil loose. Well, in a dam, we want a tight, compact soil that's going to be dense and survive over the long haul. Number two, uh, we want to make sure the, the soil doesn't erode and silt down into the pond. And so making sure we've got a good stand of grass uh, covering the entire dam, it's going to hold that soil for a long, yeah, long time. And around the, the outside of the pond. In the Especially entire, Especially if exactly, you farm around it, sometimes we don't know what we're going to do with that ground. And if you're a farmer feeder or farmer rancher, you know, making sure that if you're going to turn cows out on stocks, different things like that. We, we should just maintain a buffer strip of, of grass around that, keep it mowed, but keep it thriving to just to hold the soil and keep it from silting in. And then finally, we've got, especially in the Midwest, but throughout the U.S., we've got burrowing pests that are going to dig in muskrats, whether it's beaver, whether it's badgers, etc. They're going to dig holes and, and they're going to weaken that dam, they'll weaken the soil structure. And so we got to control some of these outside influences. Yeah, well, and the other thing is, one of the things when we talk about breaking down a pond dam or breaking down a, a pond, these cows can be really, really damaging. They're their to, own worst enemies Yeah, to, to ponds. And one of the things when we're out at the Downey Ranch and working with Joe Carpenter and Barb Downey is, is fencing off your pond. And then there's a couple of options after you fence off your pond on how you can provide access of cattle to that water. One of them is a point source drinker where you just come and you fence down into the pond and across so the cows can't go out into it. We'll, we'll, we'll fence the entire pond except for this one area, provide some rock, provide some matting, some things so that the cows can go down and get a drink there without damaging the rest of the pond. Uh, they can't get out in it. The other one that I'm seeing is when we will take a pipe from the dam, underneath the dam, to a point source drinker or to a freeze proof tank. Where the cattle aren't even having to enter the, the dam or the pond. Right. Oh wow. And so it'll be below the dam you, and, it's, and they're freeze proof. And then you'll have a 100 gallon or 200 gallon tank down there and the cattle will learn. It's a little bit easier to move. Sometimes we'll put them right in the dam but it's actually a little bit easier to manage if you'll move them out away from the dam a little ways. But two things to protect your pond, point source drinker or the waterproof or the freeze proof tank that's, that's behind the dam that's moved off just a little bit. A couple of different options to protect your, your pond. We're gonna take a break. We're gonna come back. We're gonna talk about how to stock that pond and how to harvest from that pond when we're talking about fish. Come back after these messages. Bill Rischel here in North Platte told me about Kansas Regenerative Medicine and after talking to Dr. Pope we did a lot of reading and researching, looking on the internet about it. I guess the thing that impressed me is that he told me, he said, if we don't, if we don't think it's going to help you, we're not, we're not going to do it. I'm a former athlete, played college basketball, had some severe trauma on the right ankle. This brace is what I had to wear all the time. Now I don't wear this during the day. That's a real improvement for me. I encourage anybody that's interested to go down and do a consultation with them. Healthy cows start with the new Hired Hand Automatic Livestock Sprayer. Rancher invented to provide an efficient alternative to pour on and injectable parasite management systems. The portable design allows cattle to treat themselves head to hoof. Strategic device placement with pass-through activation technology takes the stress out of parasite treatment for cattle and the rancher, leaving more time to tend to other vital tasks on the farm. To learn more, visit cowsprayer.com. The new Hired Hand makes healthy cows easy. When your living depends on agriculture, you can depend on KFRM 550 AM. If you're in the southwest three-fourths of Kansas or the northern half of Oklahoma, catch us at 550 AM on the radio dial. But if that isn't you, listen on your cell phone at TuneIn Radio or on your computer at KFRM.com. We promise to keep you informed, entertained, and company as you go through your day. KFRM 550 AM, the voice of the plains. We would like to join your management team. This Meet the Future Veterinarian is brought to you by Zuprivo. Choose confidence. Choose Zuprivo for BRD treatment. Amanda Emery recently received an Amstut scholarship. Raised on a beef and crop farm in Indiana, she is a second year vet student at Purdue University. Passionate about animal agriculture and public health, Amanda has served in Haiti with the Christian Veterinary Mission and is also pursuing a Master's of Public Health degree at the University of Minnesota.
Ag Promo Source is a unique group of marketing specialists with one mission, help your ag business grow. Each affiliate has their own area of expertise and they work together to bring you advice, products, and services. To get started, visit agpromosource.com. Ag Promo Source, together we grow. Broadband has become as important to us as highways. That is why Doc Talk is teaming up with NTCA, the Rural Broadband Association, and rural broadband companies like Blue Valley Telecommunications in fighting for quality broadband access through the program Smart Rural Communities. I don't think we have any idea what's coming in the future. I couldn't have imagined five years ago what we're doing today. So in two years, I would guess there's things we can't imagine that we're going to be doing. To learn more, visit ntca.org forward slash smart or bluevalley.net. Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture, represents grassroots agriculture. The state's largest and most powerful farm organization stands up for its members through leadership development, agriculture education, legal defense, environmental advocacy, farm safety, and risk management. Members also enjoy money-saving benefits. To join our organization today or to learn more, go to www.kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. This segment brought to you by Kansas Farm Bureau, the voice of agriculture. To join today or more information, go to kfb.org or find us on Facebook and Twitter. Hey folks, welcome back to Doc Talk. Dr. Dan Thompson here with Dr. Chris Reinhardt, and we're going to talk about stocking that pond. And we like to fish. I love to fish. If you, if you need a, a cow meeting in the summertime, <laughs> <laughs> right around the farm pond. We'll just do it around the pond, but uh, I don't like that many people around the pond, but uh, we'll have a small meeting. But anyway, ponds are part of our culture. It's part of ranching. It's, it's fun. Doc, how do we get the pond to where it is fun and it's going to be fun for a long time? You build a new pond, you got to stock it. And when we stock it with fingerlings, you, you want to put on a per acre basis is how we do that, but 120 bass, 400 bluegill, and 50 catfish. 120 bass, 400 bluegill, 50 catfish per acre. If you use sub-adults, which you can have people buy those, you know, and work with somebody that stocks pond, but then you're gonna put in fewer, and usually 30 bass, 100 bluegill, but still 50 catfish, because catfish don't reproduce, you're gonna wanna put in, whatever you take out, you put back in on the catfish. Gotcha. Okay? Bass don't spawn until the second year they've been in the pond. So, so you won't have any new bass or new bluegill generated till that second year. And so what you have to do is leave the pond alone. You have to leave that pond alone for two, three, four years until you start to see the bass be about 12 inches long. Then you can start to harvest it. A 12 inch bass weighs a pound, a seven inch bluegill weighs a third of a pound. And so I've left it alone, I've let them get to this really nice catching size. Now what? Well, you have to harvest fish. You, you know, you'll have people that'll say, we're only gonna do catch and release because I want this pond to stay full of fish. No, you need to harvest fish to keep it because you have fish that are spawning, you have new fish growth. And once you get to capacity per acre, you're gonna wanna take out 25 to 35 pounds of bass per acre per year and, and harvest it. And you wanna take out 100 to 150 pounds of bluegill per year, uh, per acre. And they're a third of a pound each. So you want to take 300 to 450 bluegill out per acre per year. So if you have a two acre pond, you need to be taking 600 to 900 bluegill out per year. And if I don't? You'll wind up with, with overrun of bluegill, smaller bass, um, and you'll change that, that ecosystem of the pond. So, and don't just keep one species. If you just keep one species, you wind up with the other one overrunning the pond as well. So, and if I catch catfish, replace them. Whatever you catch that year and, and fry up, go ahead and replace those. Keep replenishing your catfish in the pond, but they can overrun the pond as well. But uh, great show, a lot of fun. Um, managing your farm ponds, making sure that the cows don't tear it up, make sure that you don't have toxins, make sure that you keep the fish stocked. Thanks for watching Doc Talk. You can find us on the web at www.doctalktv.com. Thanks for watching Doc Talk today. I'm Dr. Dan Thompson, and I'll see you down the road. Closed captioning brought to you by Ag Promo Source. Together we grow. 
Learn more at agpromosource.com.